Hi folks, my name is uh, Troy Clark and I am an instructor at Mazingo's Music in O'Fallon, Missouri. And uh, I'm going to teach you today a couple things about uh, playing four easy, appliable chords on the guitar. I'm going to use the song Good Riddance by Green Day. Uh, and uh, we're going to get right to it. So I'm going to play the song, uh, verse, bridge, chorus, and then we'll break it down a little bit and I'll teach it to you. Okay, here we go. So those four chords that I used in the song are so easy and applicable to all kinds of music, all types of music. So I'm going to show you what these four chords are today. We're going to start off with a G major. Okay. Second chord is a C9. Third chord is a D2 or a D sus2 if you want to get technical about it. And the fourth chord, an E minor 7. And the really cool thing about these four chords is the technique involved behind it is that my ring finger never has to move through the transition of each chord. So if you watch when I play each chord, I never lift that third finger. It's a really good muscle memory trick, especially when you're first starting out and you're trying to stretch those fingers out to get them to play closer to the fret that you need to play closer to. So each time I go through one of these chords, I never use, maybe moves just a little bit when I go to that last chord. So here's the chords, G, C9, D sus2, and E minor seven. And you never have to change these chords in the song, just the order of them change in the song. So we'll start out with just the intro of the song, which um, has G, C9, and D2 for the verse. And there's a particular strum that we're going to do as we get into the song here. But first, let me just show you the chords just really quickly and how to make them nice and clean. So when you play your G, you're going to just strum nice and clean down. When we go to this next chord, we're going to purposely kill the low E string with the thumb so that when you're strumming, if you get carried away with your strumming a little bit, no matter what, that string is dead, okay? So when you follow through and you're getting a little bit crazy with your upstrokes, no matter what, that string's dead, okay? Now in the beginning, you may not have as much control with your right hand to not hit the strings you don't want to hit. but if you do that muting technique, you'll be okay, okay? So the second chord, C9, strums from the fifth string down. The third chord, D sus2, is from the fourth string down. But if you hit the fifth string, it doesn't take away from the chord because there's already another note in there that's identical to the fifth string. So those three chords, G, C9, and D sus2. Okay, so there's a strumming pattern that's involved in this. It's pretty easy, but I wouldn't say it's intermediate either because a lot of beginning stuff is all down strokes. So we're going to actually do some down and up strokes, okay? So the strumming pattern goes like this. It goes, I'll do it slowly at first. It goes down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, okay? So if you muted that, it would be... So for every chord through the entire song, we're going to do that strum. Never changes. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Okay? 
When we do the upstrokes, though, we want to be a little bit cleaner with the upstroke, OK? The downstroke is going to sound the sustain of the chord. It's going to make that chord ring for you really good, OK, and nice. So when you come up, that upstroke is just kind of carrying the sound of the chord and the rhythm of the song. So when you come up, we're only going to hit the bottom three, maybe four strings. We're not going to do a full-on strum. We're just going to. So here is the strum with the chord, and I'll just do it with one chord at first. Okay. So now I'm going to actually play all three of those chords, the G, the C9, and the D sus2 with that technique that I just showed you, okay? And this will be the verse of the song, and the verse repeats, we'll say four times for today, okay? All right, so here we go. So that was the verse section of the song, and I just applied all the techniques that we talked about. I applied the thumb or the third finger uh, technique where I did not move that third finger through each chord. So watch my third finger. Okay, we also applied the thumb over technique for the transition to the C9. We also applied the strum. The down, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, 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 up, All right. So those techniques are going to work through the entire song, through each section of the song, the verse, the bridge, the chorus. It'll never change. The only thing that will change is how you transition through the chords and the order. All right, so verse section one more time, four times in a row. So now we're going to go right to the bridge section, which actually starts with E minor 7, which is the fourth chord in the song. That chord's a little bit harder to get to when you try to leave the ring finger in place. It wants to kind of scoot back on you a little bit. But with practice, you can get it to come out really nice and clean. At first, you might have trouble stretching, and you might get like a... I'm doing that on purpose, so... <laughs> You might get that sound when you're playing. You might get that sound when you're playing all these chords in the beginning, okay? And uh, the reason behind that is usually just uh, technique development. It's usually just fundamentals that just have not completely developed yet. So with lots and lots of practice and repetition and muscle memory, those things will come together, trust me. All right. So here is the bridge section of the song. It starts out with E minor 7, D2. C9 and G6. And we're going to apply all the same techniques that we used earlier on the verse section of the song. So here we go. Okay. And that will get us right to the chorus section of the song, which is going to go back and forth between E minor 7 and G repetitively. So I'll play through the bridge and the chorus section to the end of the song for you now. Right. 
So we just basically went through the entire song, breaking down each section, uh, pretty much chord by chord, uh, technique involved, and strumming technique. So remember again, the strumming technique is not maybe a beginner's technique, but it's, it's not impossible to do if you work on those upstrokes, okay? So I'm gonna give you the timing on that again, muted, okay? So the, so the technique for the strumming, and when you're strumming, um, remember that you may not always hit every string perfectly, but the key is to keep your rhythm going steadily if you can. So if you can get this rhythm down that And it may even be good to sit and practice that without even trying to change any chords or anything. You can actually mute the sound of the guitar just by lightly touching it with your left hand, and you can practice the right hand technique. When you put the chord to it, slowly, And then back up to tempo would be. All right, guys, so now we're going to take just a moment uh, and uh, break down what each hand is doing in the song. So if you look at the uh, left hand on the guitar, I'm holding the G chord, okay? I'm gonna strum through the verse of the song and just watch my left hand and how it changes from one chord to the other, the transition. Also watch my thumb and watch what my thumb does when I go to each chord that doesn't involve um, the sixth string. Okay, so here we go. So just a couple things to note there uh, really quickly is that when I play the G chord, I'm using all six strings. When I switch to the C9, my thumb is coming down and killing the low E string purposely so that we get the clean sound of that C9 chord. It's a really beautiful chord. And then when we go to the last chord, and also notice my third finger, my ring finger. Look at that ring finger. It stays on that D note the entire time. If you can get your hand to do that, if you can get your hand to do that through the course of working on chords, if you can get certain fingers to stay in place on certain chords, your chord transition will be so much smoother sounding. And I'll show you the difference really quickly. Just I'll purposely lift my third finger each time. sounded any different but it made it a little bit harder to do okay so one more time third finger uh, staying in place and muting with the thumb All right, guys, so we took just a minute uh, covering the left hand technique uh, with a uh, close up angle on the left hand. So now we're going to do the right hand, okay? Uh, I'm going to use the same three chords G, C9, and D sus2. And I'm going to do the down, down, up, up, down, up strum. Okay, so if you watch my right hand, I'll do it slowly at first. Something that I'll tell you about the right hand technique is um, after years and years of practice, 
you do kind of get to the point to where you can actually hit the strings you want to hit with your right hand. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of focus, but you still need to do that thumb over technique uh, to make the sound of your chords really clean with your thumb, okay? So when I switch each chord and you're watching my right hand, my left hand is still doing the thumb over technique and I'm still hitting uh, only the strings I want to hit with the right hand. Okay, so I'm going to do it again, slowly. If you notice the upstrokes, I'm kind of just grazing the last three, maybe four strings. I'm not doing a full-on upstroke. And that makes it sound really nice and smooth. It also gives you the ability to not dig in with the pick. You don't want to dig in and go. That's not the sound we're looking for. We're looking for nice and smooth and clean, so. So really, it's all about the touch and how you allow the pick to hit the strings, okay? So I'm gonna do it again. Here's that upstroke. I'm purposely hitting six strings, then five strings if I can, then four to five strings on the last chord. So here we go again on the right hand technique, okay? Up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up. Different section of the song. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that lesson tutorial today on uh, four chords in the song by Green Day, Good Riddance. Uh, really simple song, really simple chords, applicable to everything you can do on the guitar when it comes to strumming chords. Um, focus on a couple of things. Focus on that good, clean strumming technique, good, clean, crisp uh, change and transition in chords, and uh, practice 30 minutes a day if you can, and I guarantee you uh, all these things will get better and better. So I'm going to play the song as an outro. Uh, my name is Troy Clark. Again, I'm an instructor at Mazingo's Music in O'Fallon, Missouri, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.